What's going on there folks? Earthmaster here jumping in on this Saturday night, May 8th, 2021, 6.30 p.m. West Coast time here in California. Quite a few folks talking about that uh, Chinese rocket that's about ready to enter the atmosphere pretty soon. I'm getting quite a bit of conflicting um, information coming out there from all over social media, uh, including the professionals at the Aerospace Corporation uh, talking about, uh, well, last time I checked, it was supposed to re-enter over the uh, northern Atlantic, right? Just to the west of uh, Europe. But now, now according to uh, the latest information here, supposed to enter over the Pacific here let's go ahead and check this out I kind of popped up uh, a couple different uh, things here at least last time I checked folks I'm not even joking this uh, this had told me that we were looking at a re-entry just west of Europe um, over the North Atlantic Ocean and uh, now they're saying That it's possible we could see the, uh, see this was the uh, area that they talked about there, right? Just west of Europe, um, out there in, in the northern Atlantic, okay? But now, now I'm getting that, uh, that it's possible we could see it uh, in, in the Pacific, So there's a lot of conflicting stuff going on, folks, um, over uh, social media all over the place. Uh, Space Track reporting data collected by U.S. Space Command estimated that the debris would make re-entry over the Mediterranean Basin. Okay, so where? Pacific? The Atlantic? Mediterranean Basin? Antarctica? Uh, Alaska? Where? where? Where exactly? I mean, how come we can't figure this specific stuff out? We have the ability to track stuff, and how come it's, not, how come it's all over the place? I don't get it. It's crazy. Um, um, Harvard, uh, Harvard base astrophysicist Jonathan McDowell said on Twitter that it was believed the United States was safe from a potential impact, but recent predictions were still tracking it from Costa Rica all the way to Australia and New Zealand. Um, this is a pretty big deal. I mean, if this thing were to, to, to impact an area where there's a lot of people and, and actually hurt someone... The implications for that could be very um, astronomical and we probably something we've never seen in our lifetime. But as of right now, let's go ahead and refresh this. According to the Aerospace, the Aerospace Corporation update from two hours ago for the Long March 5B, it's a CZ-5B rocket body entry, is May 9th, 2021, 03... 02 UTC time, okay? Let me let me check the UTC time right now. We're still We are still about an hour and a half away, but there is that plus or minus 2 hours. So the latest information from these folks here stating uh you know, this specific time here it's a it's a big window it's a major big window and that major big window plays a major part in the location of where this thing is going to come down it's pretty scary folks i mean to think that someone would be um well there's a lot of space junk up in space right there's a lot of old satellites there's a lot of old debris up there and and eventually it's going to come down it's going to come down and the thing is who's responsible for that right the safety should be of the people, utmost of the people on the ground here on planet Earth. You know, to put our lives at risk here is kind of, it's very, very sketchy. Um, so here, let me read this for you guys real quick, okay? The center of the current prediction window places this rocket body, uh, all right? Uh, it's a CZ-5B rocket body re-entering over the Pacific what a dynamic change. What a broad change that uh, these guys are putting out, out here. This prediction has shifted 24 minutes earlier than the previous prediction. Prediction. So we went from the Pacific. Well, actually, we went from just west of Europe. Now to the Pacific. Wow. So you know what, guys? This thing could land anywhere 
if you're within these tracks, this stretch uh, trajectory of um, of this of this uh, not satellite, but the old rocket body here. So anywhere, I think Mexico is still somewhat on target. Earlier, we were looking at uh, portions of uh, North America right up here in the. Uh, it, it did include California, Arizona, the southern portions, uh, uh, southern plains, Florida, these trajectories right here. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm having one heck of a coughing fit lately. Um, so now, now, the, the, the latest information, folks, like I said, and you can read it yourself right here. It places the CZ-5B rocket body re-entering over the Pacific. Okay, that's the latest, latest information there from those folks. Uh, let's see here. Here's a couple re-entry prediction legends here indicating the probability there's a lot i mean it's like you know what <laughs> it's uh it's a little bit overwhelming here guy here guys here's here's where it's gonna hit any one of these lines throughout any of the latitudes and long, long longitudes you know it's just wherever it hits it's gonna hit i'm really surprised these guys are playing this part like that i'm not even joking it's unbelievable anyway um there's a lot of information out there, folks. Uh, I will try, try to keep you guys updated on this. It's just, uh, it's sketchy. It's very, very sketchy, okay? But you gotta think about the dynamics. This is where I was looking at earlier, over here to the west of Europe, into the Northern Atlantic. This is where the spot where it's supposed to, um, land well not land but crash into okay so it's just right on the edge of a highly populated region but now you know it's like it's like now they're saying the pacific so i, I don't I, I don't get it i don't get what these guys are talking about here it's kind of it's it's very sketchy that's all i'm gonna say it's a very sketchy uh um loosely done um operation let me tell you it should never be like that in the first place we should never put people's lives in in risk um i'm gonna move on i just it, it, it bugs me it really bugs me folks there's a lot of information out there if you want to check it out there's a couple of youtube channels that are um streaming the live location i'm not gonna do that it's just it's a headache it's a major headache we're gonna move on to earthquake activity and earthquake activity is ramping up around the japan area check this stuff out folks Japan Trench seeing quite a bit of earthquake activity along the upper four and even a lower magnitude five earthquake striking just south of Japan here. A pretty good size uh, increase in activity because this region here is the area that I've been watching for quite some time um, for a potential at least, at least a 7.0 if not greater. 6.8 earthquake did not impress me, impress me um, last week. Uh, so to see this activity here is kind of ramping up. I believe we're ramping up to something pretty big here in this region. Uh, it's just it's just a matter of time. It's coming really soon, folks. Looking at the rest of Pacific Plate, it has calmed down dramatically throughout the in Indonesia area, uh, even the Philippines area, and down through New Zealand. New Zealand, very 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 quiet activity. Um, even though, you know, you can see on the map a couple small earthquakes, uh, middle fours and whatnot ramping up there. Not ramping up, but uh, kind of, you know, just mellowing things out. A little 4.7 of deep earthquake near Fiji. But overall, things calming down in this region. Uh, we are seeing a little uptick in activity along the eastern Pacific here, along the North American plate boundary, including that, uh, well, what do we have? 4.4 that struck earlier, much earlier. Uh, but it is still within that 24-hour window period out there in Nevada. It's a pretty good-sized earthquake out there in the, the desert. Uh, right smack dab, right around the Mina area, northeast or northwest of Tonopah. Um, pretty good-sized earthquake. It's been pretty quiet out there as far as medium-magnitude earthquakes go. But uh, that has changed within the last 24 hours. 
Take a look at the movement along the Sierra Nevadas here, folks. This shows the dynamics of the major plate boundaries here, okay? Yes, we had the earthquake activity in Lake Tahoe or northwest of Lake Tahoe, right? We can kind of spot it down and see a couple of small microquakes taking place. But when you look at the bigger dynamic picture here and the forces that are at play, you can see overall, all right, the Sierra Nevada mountains were built up over a, a massive amount of eon times there, e eons ago. Uh, and it took quite a bit of pressure to build those that land up. We're still seeing the dynamics of the North American plate and the Pacific plate uh, stresses at play here. Look at that line of activity stretching all the way up here along the eastern edge of the Sierra Nevadas. All the way up here. It's very visible. And this still brings me to, to the conclusion that there is still a, a heavy, heavy dynamic force at play here along the North American plate. And California is right on target. Uh, the Cascadia subduction zone is right on target as well. As uh, far as the San Andreas fault system goes, we're getting a couple, a couple small microquakes along the region. Nothing big. Let's check out the northwest part of California. This kind of tells a story of what's going on here. A 2.5 south, well south of Eureka, 28 kilometers below the surface. A deep movement earthquake along the Cascadia mega thrust area. Um, and this has a part, a major part, it's a 100% part in what's going on along with the slip and trimmer along the Cascadia. Uh, Blanco Fracture Zone seen a little increase in activity up here, 3.8 into that area where we've seen uh, a few fives, right? About a week or so ago, a couple fives and some fours kicking off here. It was actually a pretty good, um, pretty good, tri uh, not trimmer, but... Uh, swarm of moderate earthquakes off there. Missy, uh, Missy Mimi's covered this uh, earthquake update pretty well and talked about the dynamics of this specific plate boundary. But uh, lower earthquake activity ramping up today, 3.8. Uh, but overall, North American plate is on target for some specific movement. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer department real quick along the uh, Cascadia. Uh, are we updated? Yes, we are. We are updated. Okay, so check this out. Okay, a little bit of further movement away from the activity where we have been watching for about three weeks now, right? Along the Cascadia, or the, uh, not Cascades, but along the Cascadia sub subduction zone into the central coast area of Oregon. That has now, at least according to the last 24 hours, died down a little bit. And we've seen a little migration up here to the north. This is some deeper movement up here. We see quite a bit of deep movement along the Seattle area uh, of this part of the Cascadia. So a little, mi a little migration of the slippage, the slow slip movement along the Cascadia um, in the Pacific Northwest. Something to watch here. Because uh, this here in this region of the Oregon area, we've been watching this for quite some time. And it's been... Um, it's been crazy. It's been an enormous amount of activity. Uh, so if this does indeed die down by tomorrow, I'm going to do a tally uh, and compare this to years past and see how many trimmers we have recorded within the past, well, since this began here in this portion of the Cascadia compared to years past, according to the PS, uh, PSN, PNSN, or PSN, oh, let me spit it out, PNSN Network, uh, seismologists and whatnot on their 22 month intervals of uh, activity here in central uh, central coast of Oregon I'm going to compare the two and see uh, see what see what it comes out to but overall uh, kind of quiet right we're seeing a little dwindling down of activity uh, what else we got here folks is moving along oh my gosh man just a, it's a crazy day let me tell you crazy day it's a crazy life an awful beautiful crazy life let me tell you Pecos Texas kicking up down here in the desert south of uh, Carlsbad New Mexico Guadalupe Peak, Guadalupe Peak seen a little increase in activity about seven kilometers below surface for those 7.1 uh, deep earthquakes 3.1 and 3.0 some movement up here around the uh, Oklahoma area as well let's check out Yellowstone National Park real quick while we're at it and you can see yeah, I, man, I'm just <laughs> no swarms, folks. No swarms. It's just holding steady. 
holding steady and it's just very quiet. South America, let's head down there. You can see a little activity. Uh, well, let's go to the East Pacific rise. You can see that 5.1 in Central East Pacific rise and some uh, further movement out here in the Peru area and some inland deep earthquake activity uh, near the San Pedro uh, Chile area. 231 kilometers deep into the subduction zone for that 4.6 earthquake. Been watching that region for uh, for quite a few days for uh, continued deep earthquake activity. But I think, folks, with this swarming of activity here, uh, we're ramping up uh, to either see a major release of pressure here in this region along the Japan Trench, uh, or uh, as I've said in past videos, potential release of pressure along the west coast here. San Francisco northward, Cascadia subduction zone. Um, Lake Tahoe proves the uh, activity that we're seeing out there along uh, the western part of the North American plate. Uh, its, it's dynamics are, are very strong out there when it comes to the pressure gradient and that's what we've seen in the Sierra Nevada. It's, it still rings true today over the last 24 hours with these uh, quakes showing up along this eastern edge of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Uh, as far as general activity in Lake Tahoe, we've seen those two aftershocks up north there, northwest of Truckee, and a couple small earthquakes along the uh, North Tahoe Fault uh, 1.4 earthquake right in the smack dab middle of Lake Tahoe. So just a, a good time to be prepared, folks. Uh, a lot of stuff going on out there in the dynamics of uh, plate tectonics. Southeastern flank of the big island showing uh, pretty good size. Uh, earthquake activity today 37 kilometers is the general depth of these earthquakes on the southeast flank here this has uh, been ramping up here for well over the past couple years today no exception looking pretty uh, significant there with about 29 earthquakes on the southeast side all right guys um yeah just uh man that 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 chinese rocket there kind of kind of giving me a headache <laughs> It's kind of giving me a headache because there's conflicting reports of, of what's going on, where it's landing, or where it's uh, where it's going to re-enter. Re -enter. It's just, uh, man, I don't know. And, and in fact, like an hour or so ago, there were some uh, reports of it that it already entered. But you, you got to be very careful when it comes to uh, getting your information out there from social media because a lot of people... You know, like to jump the gun, but I try to look towards the uh, the professionals, and uh, the professionals are just kind of confusing me sometimes. Right, like you know, like right now, uh, with the the possible re-entry over the Pacific now. Uh, before it was the, uh, the the west of uh, just west of Europe in the northern Atlantic. So we'll see. It's coming soon, folks. So we'll keep you updated if we hear anything. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Uh, it is Saturday night, a lot of stuff going on. A 4.5 earthquake striking out here in the uh, um, area of Africa. Let me get some specifics on this real quick. This thing just popped up. Uh, kind of a, uh, what do we got? About 15 kilometers or so below the surface for that 4.5. Not a big earthquake, but it is the most recent quake there on the globe. So, watching very, very closely. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you a little bit later.